Hello. Hello, hello. There you go. I'm just going to keep reading from bacteria and on. Bacteria. <clears throat> Singular bacterium are single-celled microorganisms that have both plant and animal characteristics. A microorganism is any organism of microscopic or submicroscopic size. Some bacteria are harmful and some are harmless. Bacteria can exist almost anywhere on skin, in water, in the air, in decaying matter, on environmental surfaces, in body secretions, on clothing, or under the free edge of nails. Bacteria are so small they can only be seen with a microscope. Types of bacteria. There are thousands of different kinds of bacteria which fall into two primary types, pathogenic and non-pathogenic. Most bacteria are non-pathogenic. In other words, they are harmless organisms that may perform useful functions. They are safe to come in contact with since they do not cause disease or harm, for example, Non-pathogenic organisms are used to make yogurt, cheese, and some medicines in the human body. Non-pathogenic bacteria help the body break down food, protect against infection, and stimulate the immune system. Pathogenic bacteria are harmful microorganisms that can cause disease or infection in humans. When they invade the body, <clears throat> shops and schools must maintain strict standards for cleaning and disinfecting at all times to prevent the spread of pathogenic microorganisms. It is crucial that students learn proper infection control practices while in school to ensure that they understand the importance of following them throughout their career. Present terms and definitions related to pathogens. Um, table 4.1, causes of disease. <clears throat> Bacteria. One-celled microorganisms having both plant and animal characteristics, some are harmful, some are harmless. Direct transmission. Transmission of blood or, blood or body fluids throughout touching, including shaking hands, kissing, coughing, sneezing, and talking. Fungi. Singular fungus, single-cell organisms that grow in regular masses that include mold, mildews, and yeast. Indirect transmission. Transmission of blood or body fluids through contact with an intermediate contaminated object, such as a razor extractor, nipper, or an environmental surface. Infection, invasion of body tissues by disease causing pathogens. Germs, non-scientific synony synonyms for disease producing organisms. Microorganisms, any organism of microscopic to submicroscopic size. Pathogens, harmful microorganisms that enter the body and can cause disease. Parasites, organisms that grow, feed, and shelter on or in another organism referred to as the host. While contributing nothing to the survival of that organism, parasites must have a host to survive. Toxins, various poisonous substances produced by some microorganisms, bacteria and viruses. Virus, a submicroscopic particle that infects and resides in cells of biological organisms. Classification of pathogenic bacteria. Bacteria have three distinct shapes that help identify them. Pathogenic bacteria are classified as described below. Koshi. Oh, yeah. Are round shaped bacteria that appear singly, alone, or in groups. Stephalococci are pus forming bacteria that grow in closure like bunches of grapes. They cause abscesses, coastals, and boils. Some types of Staphylococci or staph, as, may, as many call it, may not cause infections in healthy humans, although others may be deadly. Strept. Alkoshi are pus forming bacteria arranged in curved lines resembling string of beads. They cause infections such as strep throat and blood poisoning. Diplococci are spherical bacteria that grow in pairs and cause disease such as pneumonia. Bacilli, Bacilli are short rod shaped bacteria. They are the most common bacteria and produce diseases such as tetanus. 
typhoid fever, tuberculosis, and diphtheria. diphtheria. Um, <clears throat> spirilla are spiral or corkscrew-shaped bacteria. They are subdivided into subgroups such as Treponema palladium, which cause syphilis, a sexually transmitted disease, and Borrelia burgdorferi, which cause Lyme disease. Movement of bacteria. Different bacteria move in different ways. The term motility refers to self-movement. Kochi rarely demonstrate self-movement and are generally transmitted in the air, in dust, or within the substance in which they settle. Pachili and spirilla are both capable of movement and use slender hair-like extensions called flagella for locomotion. You may also hear people refer to cilia in reference to cell movement, but they are much shorter than flagella. Bacteria require relatively many more cilia to ensure cell movement. Both flagella and cilia move cells, but they have different types of motion. Bacteria with flagella move in a snake-like motion, while those with cilia move in a rolling-like motion. Bacterial growth and reproduction. When seen under a microscope, bacteria look like tiny bags. They generally consist of an outer cell with that contains a liquid called protoplasm. Bacterial cells manufacture their own food through what they absorb from the surrounding environment. They give off waste products, grow, and reproduce. The life cycle of bacteria consists of two distinct phases the active stage and the inactive stage. Active stage, during the active stage, bacteria grow and reproduce. Bacteria multiply best in warm, dark, damp, or dirty places. When conditions are favorable, bacteria grow and reproduce. When they reach their largest size, they divide into two new cells. This division is called binary fission. The cells that are formed as a result of binary fission are called daughter cells, and are produced every 20 to 60 minutes, depending on the bacteria, for example. The infectious pathogen Staphylococcus aureus undergoes cell division every 27 to 30 minutes. When conditions become unfavorable, bacteria either die or become inactive. Inactive stage. Certain bacteria, such as the bacteria that cause tetanus and botulism, among others, can form spores by coating themselves with wax-like outer shells during unfavorable conditions. These spores protect the bacteria and enable them to withstand long periods of famine dryness, and unsuitable temperatures. In this condition, spores can be blown about and are not harmed by disinfectants, heat, or cold. If favorable conditions such as moist environment return, the spores can change into the active form and begin to grow and reproduce. Bacterial infections. There can be no bacterial infection without the presence of pathogenic bacteria. Therefore, if pathogenic bacteria are eliminated, clients cannot become infected. An inflammation is a condition in which the tissue of the body reacts to injury, irritation, or infection. An inflammation is characterized by redness, heat, pain, or swelling. Pus is a fluid containing white blood cells, bacteria, and dead cells, and is by product of the infectious process. The presence of pus is a sign of bacterial infection. A local infection, such as a pimple or abscess, is confined to a particular part of the body and appears as a lesson containing pus. A systematic infection is an infection where the pathogen has disturbed throughout the body rather than staying in one area or organ. Staphylococci are among the most common bacteria that affect humans and are commonly found in, an, in our environment, including on our bodies. <clears throat> Pause. Hello? <laughs> Where was I here? Uh, Staphylococci are among the most common bacteria that affect humans and are commonly found in our environment, including on our bodies, although most strains do not make us ill. Staph bacteria can be picked up on doorknobs, countertops, and other surfaces, but in the barbershop, they're more frequently spread through skin-to-skin -skin contact, such as shaking hands, or through the use of unclean tools or implements and can be very dangerous. Staph is responsible for food poisoning and a wide range of diseases, including toxic shock syndrome. Some types of infectious staph bacteria are highly resistant to con con conventional treatments such as antibiotics. An example is the staph infection called methicillin-resistant staphylococcus 
methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Historically, MRSA occurred most frequently among persons with weakened immune systems or among people who had undergone medical procedures. Today, it has become more common in otherwise healthy people. Clients who appear completely healthy may bring this organism into the shop where it can infect others. Some people carry the bacteria and are not even aware of the infection, but the people they infect may show more obvious symptoms. MRSA initially appears as a skin infection, presenting as pimples, rashes, or boils that can be difficult to, to cure. Without proper treatment, the infection becomes systematic and can have devastating consequences that can result in death. Because of these highly resistant bacterial strains, it is important to clean and disinfect all tools and implement used. And customers also do not perform services if the client's skin, scalp, or neck show visible signs of abrasion or infection. When the disease spreads from the one person to another, the disease is said to be cottages disease, also known as communicable disease. Some of the more common contagious diseases that prevent a barber from servicing a client are the common cold, ringworm, conjunctivitis, and viral infections. The most common way these infections spread is through dirty hands, especially under the fingernails and in the webs between the fingers. Be sure to always wash your hands and after using the restroom and before eating, contagious diseases can also be spread by contaminated implement cuts, affected nails, open sores, pus, mouth, and nose discharges, shared drinking cups, telephones, receivers, and towels. Uncovered coughing or sneezing and spitting in public also spread germs. Table 4.2 lists terms and definitions that are important for a general understanding of the disease. Viruses. A virus is a microscopic particle that infects and resides in the cells of biological organisms. A virus is capable of replication only through talking over the whole cell's reproductive function. Viruses are so small that they can only be seen under the most sophisticated and powerful microscopes. They cause common colds and other respiratory and gastrointestinal infections. Some of the viruses that plague humans are measles, mumps, chickenpox, smallpox, rabies, yellow fever, hepatitis, polio, influenza, and HIV, which causes AIDS. One difference between viruses and bacteria is that a virus can live and reproduce only by taking over other cells and becoming part of them. While bacteria can live and reproduce on their own, another difference is that while bacteria infections can usually be treated with specific antibiotics, viral infections cannot, and viruses are hard to kill without harming the whole cells in the process. When available, vaccinations can prevent viruses from growing in the body. There are many vaccines available for viruses, but not all viruses have vaccines. There are vaccines available for hepatitis B and varicella the virus that causes shingles, and you should strongly consider receiving these vaccines as well as vaccines for the seasonal flu and pneumonia. Biofilms. Biofilms are colonies of microorganisms that adhere to environmental surfaces as well as the human body. They secrete a sticky heart to penetrate protective coating that cements them together. The biofilm grows into a complex structure with many kinds of microbes. The sticky matrix substance holds communities together, making them very hard to piece, to pierce with antisepsis, antimicrobials, and disinfection. It keeps the body in a chronic inflammatory state that is painful and inhibits healing. One action of the biofilm community is to resist the body's defense mechanisms. We are learning that biofilms play a large role in disease and infection. Biofilms are usually not visible and must grow very large to be seen without a microscope. Dental plaque is an example of a visible human biofilm. Numerous per, um, persistent infections, including periodic periodontal disease, osteomyelitis, cystic fibrosis, otitis media, conjunctivitis, prostatitis, endocard, man, I can't say, urinary catheter infection contact lens and corneal infection and infection associated with medical devices and surgical and sterile instruments are associated with biofilm. that are not visible. Algae of colonies on ponds and slime and drains are example of environmental biofilms. Ah, because biofilms are hard to detect, their presence and, and effects seem to be underestimated. They are one of the most significant scientific discoveries of the past few decades, though we have much more to learn. 
conscientiously using infection control precautions, including standard precautions, cleaning, disinfection, and sterilization is the best method of preservation at the present time. Bloodborne pathogens, disease causing microorganisms that are carried in the body by blood or body fluids, such as hepatitis and HIV, are called bloodborne pathogens. Bloodborne pathogens in the barbershop, the spread of bloodborne pathogens is possible during hair cutting and shaving services whenever the skin is broken. Use great care to avoid cutting or damaging the customer's skin during any type of service. Hepatitis is a bloodborne virus that causes disease and can damage the liver. In general, it is difficult to contract hepatitis. However, hepatitis is easier to contract than HIV because hepatitis can be present in all body fluids of those who are infected. In addition, unlike HIV, hepatitis can live on a surface outside of the body for long periods of time. For this reason, it is vital that all surfaces that the customer comes in contact with are thoroughly clean and disinfected. There are three types of hepatitis that are the concern for barbers. Hepatitis A, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C. HBV is the most difficult to kill on a surface, so check the label of the disinfectant you use to be sure that the product is effective against HBV. Hepatitis B and hepatitis C are spread from person to person through blood and less often through other body fluids. HIV and AIDS, the human immune immunodeficiency virus, an abbreviated HIV is the virus that causes acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Abbreviated AIDS. AIDS is a disease that breaks down the body's immune system. HIV is spread from person to person through blood and less often through other body fluids, such as semen and vaginal secretions. A person can be infected with HIV for many years without showing symptoms, but testing can be determined whether a person is infected within six months after exposure to the virus. Sometimes people who are HIV positive have never been tested and do not know they have the potential to infect others. HIV is spread mainly through the sharing of needles by intravenous, by intravenous drug users and by unprotected sexual contact. Less commonly, HIV is spread through accidents with needles and healthcare settings. The virus is less likely to enter the bloodstream through cuts and sores. Holding hands, hugging, kissing, sharing food, or using household items such as the telephone or toilet seat that does not spread HIV. If you accidentally cut a client's skin, the tool will be contaminated with whatever might be in the client's blood, including HIV. You should not continue to use the implement without cleaning and disinfecting it. Continuing to use contaminated implement without cleaning and disinfecting it puts you and others in the barber shop at risk of infection. Fungi. Fungi are a single cell organism that grow in ir irregular masses that include molds, mildews, and yeast. They can produce contagious diseases such as ringworm, mildew. Another fungus affects plants or grows on inanimate objects but does not cause human infection in the barbershop. The most frequently encountered fungal infection resulting from hair services is tangy barbae also known as barber's itch. Tinea barbae is a superficial fungal infection caused by a variety of the dermatypes, fungi that, that require keratin for growth that commonly affect the skin. It is primarily limited to the bearded areas of the face and neck or around the scalp. This infection occurs almost exclusively in older adolescent and adult males. A person with tinea barbae may have deep inflamed or non-inflamed patches of skin on the face or in the nape of the neck. Tinea barbae is similar to tannin capitis, a fungal infection of the scalp characterized by red papules or spots at the opening of the hair follicles. Barbers must clean and disinfect clipper blades to avoid spreading scalp and skin infections. The risk of spreading skin and scalp infections can be reduced by the first removal of all visible hair and debris from clippers, followed by thorough cleaning and disinfection of non-electrical parts. You can use compressed air instead of the staff, the stiff brush to remove hair and debris from clippers before cleaning and disinfecting them. Turn the clippers on before applying the air to dislodge as much hair as possible during the procedure. Always refer to the manufacturer's directions for proper cleaning and disinfecting methods and recommendations. Parasites are organisms that grow, feed, and shelter on or inside another organism. While contributing nothing to the survival of that organism, they must have a host to survive. Parasites can live on or inside of humans and animals. They also can be found in food, on plants, and trees. 
and in water, humans can acquire internal parasites by eating fish or meat that has not been properly cooked. External parasites that affect humans on or in the skin include ticks, lice, fleas, and, mite, and mites. Services should never be performed on a customer with visible signs of parasitic infestation. Always to refer the clients to a physician for treatment. Following are two types of parasite commonly encountered in the barbering environment. Head lice are a type of parasite responsible for contagious diseases and conditions. One condition caused by an infection of head lice is called pediculosis capitis. Scabies is also a contagious skin disease and is caused by the itch mite, which burrows under the skin. Contagious diseases and conditions caused by parasites should only be treated by a doctor. Contaminated countertops, tools, and equipment should be thoroughly cleaned and then disinfected with an EPA registered disinfectant for the time recommended by the manufacturer or with bleach solution for 10 minutes. Immunity refers to the ability of the body to destroy and resist pathogens and recognize infection. Immunity against disease can be either natural or acquired and is a sign of good health. Natural immunity is partly inherited and partly developed through healthy living. Acquired immunity is immunity that the body develops after overcoming the disease through inoculation or through exposure to natural allergens, such as pollen, cat, dander, or ragweed. Prevent the spread of disease. Proper infection control can prevent the spread of disease caused by exposure to potentially to potential, potentially infectious material on an item surface. Infection control will also prevent exposure to blood and visible debris or residents such as dust, hair, and skin. Just reading the word dust makes no sense. Proper infection control requires two steps. Cleaning and then disinfecting with, a prop, with an appropriate EPA registered disinfectant. When these two steps are followed correctly, virtually all pathogens of concern can be effectively eliminated. Sterilization, which is a process that destroys all microbial life, including spores, is a third step that can be incorporated, but it is very rarely man mandated. Effective sterilization typically requires the use of an autoclave, a piece of equipment that incorporates heat and pressure for sterilization to be effective. Items must be cleaned prior to use and the, auto and the autoclave must be tested and maintained as instructed in the manufacturer's specifications. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention require that autoclaves be tested weekly to ensure they are properly sterilized and cloaked. The accepted method is called a spore test. Sealed packages containing test organisms are subject to a typical sterilization cycle and then sent to a contract laboratory that specializes in autoclave performing testing. Step one, clean. Yes. <clears throat> Stated, infection control has two steps, cleaning and disinfecting. Remembering that when you clean, you must remove all visible dirt and debris from tools, implement and equipment by washing them with liquid soap and warm water, and by using a clean and disinfected brush to scrub any groove or hidden portions of the item. When a surface is properly cleaned, the number of contaminants on the surface is greatly reduced. In turn, this reduces the risk of infection. The vast majority of contaminants and pathogens can be removed from the surfaces of tools and implements through proper cleaning. This is why cleaning is an important part of disinfecting tools and equipment. A surface must be properly cleaned before it can be properly disinfected. Using a disinfectant without cleaning first is like using mouthwash without brushing your teeth. It just does not work properly. Clean surfaces can still harbor small amounts of pathogens, but the presence of fewer pathogens means infections are less likely to be spread. Applying antiseptics to your skin or washing your hands with soap and water will drastically lower the number of pathogens in your hand. Hold on.
Proper hand cleaning requires rubbing the hands together and using liquid soap, warm running water, a nail brush, and a clean towel. Do not underestimate proper cleaning and hand washing. They are the most powerful and important ways to prevent the spread of infection. There are three ways to clean your tools and implements. Washing with soap and warm water, and then scrubbing them with a clean and properly disinfected nail brush. Using an ultrasonic unit, using a cleaning solvent. Step two, disinfecting. The second step of infection control is disinfection. Remember that disinfection is a process that eliminates most, but not necessarily all microorganisms on non-porous surfaces. This process, however, is not effective against bacterial spores. In the barbershop, disinfection is extremely effective in controlling microorganisms on surfaces such as shears, clippers, and other multi-use tools and equipment. A disinfectant used at the shop should carry an, an EPA registration number, and the label should clearly state the specific organism the solution is effective against when used according to the manufacturer's product's instructions. Remember that disinfectants are products that destroy most bacteria, not including spores, fungi, and viruses on surfaces. Disinfectants are not for use on human skin, hair, or nails. Never use disinfectant as hand cleaners since this can cause skin irritation and allergy, a, re a reaction due to extreme sensitivity to certain foods, chemicals, or other normally harmless substances. All disinfectants manufacturers clearly state on the label of their products that skin contact should be avoided. This means your skin as well as the client's skin. Do not put your fingers directly into any disinfecting solution. Disinfectants are, are pesticide and can be harmful if absorbed through the skin. If you mix a disinfectant in a container that is not labeled by the manufacturer, the container must be properly labeled with the content and the date it was mixed. All concentrated disinfectants must be diluted exactly as instructed by the manufacturer on the product label. While some customers who know that they have impaired immune systems will share that information with you, Many will not because they are, they are embarrassed. They do not know it is important or they do not know that they have a compromised immune system. These people are at a very high risk of infection if they come into contact with pathogens. Because you will not always know who these people are, it is important to practice proper infection control before every customer. One example is a diabetic customer whose immune system does not work effectively and who also has impaired heat. Most type 2 diabetics have been diabetic for seven years prior to being diagnosed, which means that even if you ask, they may likely say no because they have not yet been diagnosed. Another example concerns clients on a medication for conditions such as asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, and fibromyalgia. These medications are designed to dull the immune system, making these customers particularly Susceptible to infection, remember you do not know everybody who sits in your chair, so provide the best disinfection for everyone. Choosing a disinfectant. You must be ready and follow the manufacturer's instruction whenever you are using a disinfectant. Mixing ratios and, con and contact time. The time as listed on the product label requires for the disinfectant to be visibly moist. To be effective against pathogens are very important and can vary widely based on manufacturer and the de delivery method. For example, most concentrates have a 10-minute contact time, whereas most wipes have a 2-minute contact time. Not all disinfectants have the same concentration, so to be so be sure to mix the correct proportions according to the instructions on the label. If the label does not have the word concentrate on it, the product is already mixed and must be used directly from the original container and must not be diluted. All EPA registered disinfectants, even those sprayed on our surfaces, will, will specify a contact time in their direction for use. Disinfectants must have efficiency claims on the label. Efficiency is the ability to produce the intended effect as applied to disinfectant claims. Efficiency means the effectiveness with which the a disinfecting solution kills organisms when used according to the label instruction. Proper use of disinfectants. Implements must be thoroughly clean of all visible matter or residue before being placed in disinfectant solution. This is because residue will interfere with disinfectant and prevent proper disinfection. Properly cleaned implements and tools free from all visible debris must be completely immersed 
in this effective solution. Complete immersion means there is enough liquid in the container to cover all surfaces of the item being disinfected, including the handles for 10 minutes or for time or for the time recommended by the manufacturer. When using an aerosol disinfectant, you must still look for and adhere to the contact time to ensure that all pathogens on the label are being effectively destroyed. Disinfectant tips. Use disinfectants only on clean, hard, non-porous surfaces. Always wear gloves and safety glasses when handling disinfectant solutions. Always dilute products according to the instructions on their product label. An item must remain submerged in disinfectant for 10 minutes unless the product's label is specifically different. To disinfect large surfaces such as countertops, carefully apply disinfectant onto the clean surface or use disinfectant spray and allow it to remain moist for 10 minutes unless the product label specific, specifies differently. If the product label states complete immersion, the entire implement must be completely immersed in the solution. Change the disinfectant according to the instructions on the label. If the liquid is not changed as instructed, it will no longer be effective and may begin to promote the growth of microbes. Types of disinfectants. Disinfectants are not all the same. Some are appropriate for the use in shop and some are not. You should be aware of the different types of disinfectants and the ones that are recommended for the barbershop use. Disinfectant appropriate for barbershop use. Quaternary ammonium compounds, also known as quads, are disinfectants that are very effective when used properly. The most advanced type of these formulations is called multiple quads. Multiple quads contain sophisticated blends of quads that work together to significantly increase the effectiveness of these disinfectants. Quad solutions usually disinfect implements in 10 minutes. These formulas may contain anti-rust anti ingredients, so leave tools in the solution for prolonged periods and cause dulling, dulling or damage. They should be removed from the solution after the specific period. Rinse if required, dried and stored in a clean covered container. Phonelic disinfectants are powerful disinfectants known as tuberculotical. They are a form of formaldehyde, have a very high pH, and can damage the skin and eyes. Phenolic disinfectants can be harmful to the environment if put down the drain. They have been used reliably over the years to disinfect tools, however, they do have drawbacks. Phenol can damage plastic and rubber and can cause certain metals to rust. Extra care should be taken to avoid skin contact with, with phenolic disinfectants. Phenolics are known carcinogens and such as should only be used in states that require or permit their use. Bleach. Household bleach. 5.25% sodium hypochlorite is an effective disinfectant and has been used extensively as disinfectants in the workshop. Using too much bleach can damage some metals and plastics, so be sure to read the label for safe use. Bleach can be corrosive to metals and plastics and can cause skin irritation and eye damage. To mix, uh, to mix bleach solution, always follow the manufacturer's directions. Store the bleach solution away from the heat and light. A fresh bleach solution should be mixed every 24 hours or when the solution has been contaminated. After mixing the bleach solution, date the container to ensure that the solution is not safe from one day to the next, but disposed of daily, similar to other disinfectants. Bleach can be irritating to the lungs, so be careful about inhaling the fumes. <coughs> Petroleum distillates. Petroleum distillates have been used by barbers for decades and are generally very similar to chemical structures to kerosene. They are excellent removing grime and oils from metals, but not all products in the classification are approved for the use of disinfectants. It is important that you check the product to ensure that it is bacteri bactericidal, viricidal, and fungicidal. The product must also be EPA registered and as a disinfectant. How much do you have left here? Yeah, I'm gonna have to finish this. This is gonna be the first part three. So